So it's a very warm welcome. Today we are going to look at the subject of personal leadership branding. Why might you need to brand yourself as a leader? When and how might that branding come into use? And what we're going to do today is we're going to go through a kind of a mindset, a skill set and a tool set, all based around that kind of conceptual idea of shadow of the leader. And the idea here is that you are a brand. And if you think about yourself as a brand, you may therefore then think about, is my intention the same as the impact that people receive? Or is there a slight mismatch between the two? Some of that might require a bit of feedback. And therefore, in terms of the skill set that we're thinking about getting people to there apply is that, how do I go and get that feedback and use a brand key as a tool that I'm going to introduce you to? And my offer to you is that if people back in terms of their brand key, having taken some time to reflect and complete it, please pick up the phone and connect with me. I'm more than happy to take you through that offline. So we're going to share the brand key towards the end of this session. Uh, if you are new to Uspire, this is what our vision is. And we just have tried to get out into the marketplace and provoke people into thinking differently. When they're provoked, they then feel a little bit more energized because it's thinking, oh, this is a bit different. And Sorry, through that energy, you. through that interaction, I might be asking you just to do some chat or to share your thoughts and engage with us. We tend to find that people therefore then are then more open to transforming either the way they come across, the way they lead their teams, or the way that they lead their businesses. We're going to look at this. What is brand you? What is brand you? What do you stand for? And also, uh, what do other people use to describe you? What words do they use? So we're going to get into those as we flow through the first session. But I'm going to ask you just to introduce yourselves in chat, if you wouldn't mind. Just open up the chat. Just write your name, where you're from, and what your expectations are. That would be really useful just to get you engaged with this session. I like interacting. I like people sharing stuff. I like you making connections with one another. So just please drop that in. Lucy, are you on the keyboard or is Sue on the keyboard? Which one of you is going to be doing it? Me, I'm on keyboard. <laughs> okay, so you can introduce both the, the, both of you together. And uh, if Ben and Charlotte and Vincenzo have got a camera, it'd be great if you could turn those on. That'd be great. Thank you very much. It'd be great to see your smiling faces. Fast typing, Mark. Okay. This just gives me a little bit of time to set this up. Stuff spread all around. Welcome. Welcome, Barbara. Great to have you on. Join us. Thank you very much. Welcome, Kate. Welcome, Charlotte. Mr. Cooper, great to have you on as well. Great stuff. So now that we're a bit introduced, I thought I might start with the end in mind, maybe like a good book or one of those movies where you see the possible outcomes of some of this provocation that I'm going to introduce you today. And we're going to start with a little video from uh, a guy called Grant LaBeouf. Grant's uh, a friend of ours and also a marketeer. And Grant's going to talk to you a little bit about social media. But this might be an application of some of the thinking that I'm going to take you through. It's not just the only thing, but I'm going to share it because I like the way that Grant brings things to life. So let's listen to Grant and uh, let's start the provocation with your social media life. Why are people's social media profiles so bad? Let's face it, we know that if someone's going to work with you, there's a good chance that they're going to search for you online and find, for example, your LinkedIn profile, which is written, after all, by you. So why are so many of them written so badly? Why do people put something like, I've been working in insurance for 27 years, instead of writing, I am an insurance expert? Surely the second one comes across much better. And why is it that people will post photos that look like they've come out of a horror scene because there's half an arm hanging over them because they cropped a holiday picture when they were sunning it in Marbella. We all walk around with digital cameras in our pocket all the time. Surely you can take a decent photograph for your LinkedIn profile. 
You know, we're not all media personalities. If you Google David Beckham, there's a very good chance that most of what's written about him is written by other people and journalists. But when people Google you, chances are 90% of what they find was written by you. If you're the writer, at least make it good. At least roll the dice in your own favour and make sure that it works for you. We all know it's important, so make sure you do it properly and sort your life out. Well, at least your social media. Stuff. So there's Grant kicking us off. Fascinated to know who connected with that. Kate, you're in my line of sight, so I can see you smirking away at Grant saying, sort your media life out. So there's a possible application of what you might start to do when you start thinking about your own personal branding. So let's start thinking about ourselves as brands, and we'll come on to what is a brand in a little bit. But let's start thinking about you as maybe a brand. And if you had to describe yourself as a car, a brand of car, what would you be? So I'm going to ask you just to use the chat for this. Maybe have a think about that. I'm going to get Tilly. What kind of kind of just drop it into the chat? What brand of car would you choose to be? A Jeep Grand Cherokee, I don't know, a Kia Sportage, maybe a Mercedes Benz, something like that. A Land Rover Defender, there's the outdoors piece coming in, love it. Wonder where Ben's gone. What kind of brand of car would Ben be, do we think? Stuff, an Audi, lovely stuff, a Lexus coming in. What would Charlotte be? Peter, there's no eye on that end of that Golf. Golf GT, Golf GTI, is it? You're in a little bit of injection there? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Great stuff. So that's the easy part of the question. Why? Why do you describe yourself as that? What is your thinking behind your choice of brand? You start thinking like a marketeer. Ben, why the Audi, eh? Come off mute, Ben. Come off, Ben. What what specific car of Audi would you be, Ben? Uh, you want me to chat rather than go on the chat? Yeah, that other people can chat. Oh, God, you, got, you, got you got me on. You got me on the spot. Um, do you know what? I've always uh, <laughs> there was an advert back in the nineties where the guy was. It was a real play off each other's brands, and it was actually a bit of a whack in the face to BMW. And it was a flash guy driving around going, "Yeah," and right at the end he goes, "Yeah." not my not my cup of tea and he was talking to a quite an older more dare i say it, slightly more understated kind of guy and that was a, that was a, probably 20 years ago that I'd, all, i've always remembered it and uh brilliant branding on my own so yeah i've always just felt like it's a nice car but it's understated it's you know you know what it is but you're not giving it the you know so i don't know i feel like if that was me i'd like to think that i'm i'm serious but i'm not an ass if that makes sense um so there you go if that makes sense so listen to the words that you're using in terms of that serious, understated, that quality, maybe a bit serious, but actually, you know, not taking myself too seriously. And Karen's looking at the words like, you know, high quality, um, whereas you've got Lucy talking about practical. So looking at the words of particularly cars that you use to describe yourself might start to create a little bit of a mirror back to yourself in terms of what it is that you might start to say about yourself when you start thinking about your own branding. So I'm just gonna ask for some thumbs up and thumbs down. If you've got your cameras off, you can use an emoji because not everybody's got a camera that works. The question I've got is, is the car brand that you typed into the chat, the car brand that you own, yes or no? Just give me a thumbs up, yes or no? You do, you do some thumbs up, there's some thumbs down. Okay, so people with the thumbs down, the question that I'd like you to ask is, is that a car that you would like to own? Is that a yes or no? So absolutely, there we go. Peter, you, would you like to own that, that Golf GT, Golf GTI? Maybe a bit more retrospective. Yes, if I can get my golf clubs in the boot, that's the dilemma. Oh, there we go. So there's a practical way of holding you back. I'm just going to come through cyberspace to Alex. Alex, what brand of car did you choose and why? See if you can come up. You can use the space bar on the Zoom. You can press the space bar like a trigger and then let it go. It puts you back on mute again. 
Hi, Chester. So, so I picked um, Land Rover Discovery, um, which I think is, I'm still, I'm not sure it's entirely right, but, um, you know, pretty sporty. Um, I like to think I'm probably more reliable than a Land Rover because um, they can break down from time to time. Um, um, yeah, I just, um, equally, they're not that innovative. So I'm wondering if I wonder if I pick quite the right right, uh, right brand there, but a, a brand of car there. But um, yeah, so it's eliciting different thoughts in terms of where the fit is. So I've got your thinking going. Is it? Is it really? Maybe it was just the one that came first to mind. Above and beyond, I believe, is a Land Rover's brand, uh, brand description. So maybe you can hold on to their their brand essence above and beyond, which is uh, something that you can therefore maybe weave back into your own thinking. So we've got a good idea in terms of kind of brand, uh, branding, something about you, and maybe that's a bit of a mirror. But whilst we walk, look around the world to understand how we might brand ourselves and the words we might use to describe ourselves, by looking at the things we connect with, it's quite useful just to kind of have that self-reflection. So let's have a look at maybe at some people that have branded themselves. And I'm going to do a little quiz now to somebody that was around in the media eye a few years ago. And I wonder if you know who this individual is. It's four questions. And the first question is about this person to get and see if you can guess is, this person lined up for Manchester United in the Champions League final against Bayern Munich. This person lined up for Manchester United in the Champions League final against Bayern Munich. A couple of years later, this same individual went out to bat for England against Australia at Headingley. The same individual. A year later, this individual made the podium of Silverstone with Michael Schumacher. Any ideas who this individual is? Final clue is this same individual appeared at Wimbledon and played tennis against Tim Hemman. Does anybody know who this is? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. This person does exist. Does exist. No, no. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So let me introduce you to this individual. So this is uh, the Manchester United team lining up against Bayern Munich. And, and for those mathematicians on the call, you'll notice there are 12 individuals in this team photo. And by my last reckoning, there are 11 individuals on a football team. You've got the likes of Scholes and, uh, and Beckham there. You've then moved uh, forward into the, uh, the realms of Australia cricket. Here he is appearing at Headingley, chatting on a little telephone before beating Michael Schumacher to pole position. This is this gentleman is called Carl Powers. And here he is playing tennis against Tim Hemman at Wimbledon. Now, Carl Powers was around in the late 90s, and Carl Powers has probably done more for big sporting occasion security than any other individual in the world. Now, Carl Powers had a vision and a dream to feel the atmosphere and to wear the shirt of every single large sporting occasion that he could. Unfortunately, his athletic abilities meant that he was never going to do that. And therefore, he used his creativity and his nuance to find ways to actually live his dream, to live his vision. And he found ways to get onto the podium at Silverstone, through the security at Wimbledon, and even just by wearing the shirt, come out to bat for England at cricket at Headingley. Now, I guess if you have you now heard of him, just give me a thumbs up if you've now heard of him as I talk through that story. So we've got one in terms of Sue and Charlotte's going to go, ah, OK, great. So the reason I asked that question is because what Carl did was back in 99, 2000, 2001 and 2002. 
And in terms of branding and staying relevant to people, you need to have recency. And when you heard Grant LeBuff talking about sort your media life out, or at least your digital social media life, he's also just talking about relevance, recency, and reach. Now, Carl Power did all of his work before social media, and he created notoriety with just mainstream traditional news. Can you just imagine the reach that he may well have gone got had he done all of that stuff in a viral environment? Uh, so we talk about Carl Powers, but people just not heard of him because he's not recent. Therefore, when you start thinking about yourself in terms of branding, how you stand, how you project, how you communicate yourself as a leader, you've got to keep that recency. You've got to keep that ability to be able to reach out to others for them to really understand your relevance, your message. So there's an element of repetition here. So if you think of yourself as a leader and that you've done a bit of branding, you've posted some stuff on LinkedIn and you sit back, that's not gonna work and not gonna cut it in today's digital age where people continually need reminding of what your values are, what you stand for, why should they be buying into you? So that's why I'm gonna start getting into this idea about what is brand you? What do you stand for? What's your intention? And what's your impact? What's your impact? So we talked about a little bit about brand branding, some people that have branded themselves, reach relevance and recency. Let's just dial back and then think about what a brand is. So I'd like you just to drop into the chat what you believe a brand is. What is a brand? And whilst you're doing that, I'm going to tell you what a brand isn't. So whilst you're typing in there, what do you think a brand is? A brand is not your logo. A brand's not your website. A brand's not your product. Okay. A brand is not the look and feel of your, your Spire slide. Okay. Alex Fast in the type in there, a belief system. A yeah, I love that, Vincenzo. A, a story, a compelling story about you. Okay. Love it, Phil. It's the, it's the emotional connection. Absolutely. So Phil's got that emotional connection that's kind of connected with and comes back into Alex's kind of uh, belief system. Values and beliefs and behaviours and actions. Love that. So it's not all of the marketing collateral that you create. Those are more a reflection of what a brand is. And therefore, when we start thinking about branding, we need to go more back into a belief system, thinking about the nuts and bolts that build up into that external ex expression of what the brand stands for so that people can make, make that visual shortcut in their own minds. And yet we spend a huge amount of time doing artwork and pantones and color schemes and layouts and what the YouTube looks like. And have we got maybe consistency across all of our social media channels, if that's your bag. And yet we don't often spend as much time drilling down into the essence about what is brand you? And we're going to use the brand key to do that in due course. So let's just think about what's in a name. What's in a name? What's in the brand name? And I'm just going to stick up a little background here and then move out of the way. So if I said to you, Oprah, if I was to say to you, Oprah Tilly, what would you connect with in terms of a brand name here, Tilly? In terms of Oprah's meaningful and memorable, how, how memorable is the name Oprah to you, Tilly? Yeah, I mean, she's completely iconic. You don't sort of need to know first name or last name. She's just Oprah. And you know that she represents... Oh, she represent, represents women, personal growth. Uh, she's kind of grown up and taken America with her on a journey. She's profoundly memorable. Profoundly memorable. In terms of being distinctive, I'm going to come across cyberspace to Barbara, who's making rapid notes as we go. What, what What's distinctive about Oprah's name then, Barbara? 
I, I think it's her. It's, it's her presence. Her presence. Tell me more about her presence. What do you mean by that? I think she's just kind of a, a big character when she's on stage. She's, um, she's full on. Like you know, she's she's there. She's engaged. She's on it. She's she's all go. So there's energy, there's passion. Yeah, 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 that's a better word. buy into everything that she does <laughs> and you connect with her. Whether or not you like her or not is absolutely irrelevant. Some some names are very polarizing, for example, and yet they still create cut through. In terms of ownable and flexible, Kate, I'm just going to come to you. How ownable is her name? Well, that's probably fairly well stated. How flexible, Kate, do you think the, the Oprah brand is for her? You're going to have to come off mute there. So you can either it's, hold it, your face. It, or it, it, it's opened many doors for her, I suspect. It's it's absolutely kind of that name is going to get you in through any door, really, isn't it? Good stuff. And d does it make her likeable, do you think? Uh, that's everybody's own perspective, I guess. It's it's <laughs> That's an opinion, not a fact. <laughs> Great stuff. So absolutely quite, it can be polarizing, but just think about how you start to create your brand, the brand name, your brand name in terms of leadership. What do people talk about in terms of how meaningful are you to them? How memorable, how distinctive are you? And then can you mold yourself? Are you flexible? And you've heard people like Phil right at the beginning, who's come from industry and into consultancy and has flexed his own brand capabilities based on his experience and his background and has created a new business and therefore this i kind of share with you in terms of you'll have a business plan you might have a development plan you might have a personal development plan and you might therefore then start thinking about i've got an appetite to start promoting what i stand for so you've got your plan but that's just the bottom right how do you then market yourself? What channels are you going to create? And they don't need to be social media channels. They might be within work, for example. And those channels might be people that promote your values or your mission or your vision. And if you've seen that YouTube clip around starting a movement, it st starts with one low nut and then there's a follower. And the movement really starts once the follower draws in other followers because they reduce some of the barriers to embarrassment. And therefore a movement then starts once you've got a number of fo followers following your vision, following your passion, following your strategic direction. And some of you are senior leaders in businesses and you will have seen that momentum build as you start to create change in your audience. The key challenge is, are you looking for the impact and the intention being together are you communicating a consistent message and how do you do that so that's what i'm going to just throw out in terms of just some personal challenge and reflection as i then start to get you to think about describing yourself as a leader so as you describe yourself as a leader i'm just going to hold this piece of paper it's just as easy to hold up here is my piece of paper. How would you describe yourself as a leader? If we went back to the analogy of cars, are you kind of like high octane, kind of sporty, driven, go fast and really, you know, uh, it's all about speed of change and delivery? Are you maybe more multi-purpose? You know, are you a multi-purpose leader that is about fitting lots in? You're adaptable depending on the occasion and the and the situation. Maybe, although this is now slightly more mainstream, you're more alternative, you're new, you're about innovation, you're about big ideas, you're about creating change. Maybe you're kind of more of the explorer, you're into going places, you're into giving things a go, going to the path less trodden or the one less driven. Some leaders lead through flamboyance by standing out. You can think of a number of maybe football managers, maybe someone like Mourinho, for example, who is just a little bit more outspoken and they let their image and their flamboyance create that leadership kind of thing. Now, hopefully you're not really in this kind of category here, which is kind of feeling a bit dilapidated, a little bit beaten up, a little bit left on the side and potentially needing to kind of reinvent your careers. But how would you describe your style of leadership and 
and your so, so drop drop that in the chat for me just drop it into the chat how would you use words to describe your personal leadership style how would you use words to describe that <laughs> thank you lucy <laughs> great stuff ben where have you gone with your thinking drop that into chat you don't have to come off mute but you're very welcome to how would you how would you describe your own leadership style bit more of a tougher question that one i'm starting to get you to really start digging in and thinking about open okay what else what else have we got there charlotte what words is charlotte going to come up with motivational progressive supportive interesting isn't it campy when i remember to be supportive that style flex that you are so good at adapting in the moment. Vincenzo's the SUV to explore new ideas. So you can start to see how we've got different leadership styles here, right? And thinking about that SUV, look how different people have interpreted what that kind of adaptability is. Inclusive, reliable, and creative. I'm loving some of these words coming in. What else have we got? Not quiet, but challenging. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change tack very slightly and I'm going to introduce you to a friend and colleague of mine. Less a colleague, is more of a university friend of mine, so there's a bit of banter between the two of us. His name is Ben Shepherd, and Ben Shepherd, for those of you beyond the UK and Ireland, is a TV presenter. Um, Ben's going to be talking about developing his brand, Brand Shepherd. And just, I'd like you to think about this question. What do you hear Ben say that connects with you? And feel free to drop it into chat as you watch the video. Some people like to capture notes in the moment. Some of you might just want to scribble them down uh, and you know keep them to yourselves. But what do you connect with in terms of what you hear Ben say? And he's talking about actually going through a conscious process of branding himself. And I'm conscious he's a personality but i think it's really useful for people to hear how professionals go about branding themselves see what you connect with and what can you steal and pull back into your world and mark i'm just going to ask you just to uh, let me know that you can hear the sound as i start to share this and in that from where you start to where you want to be is uh you have to be more strategic about it. I've worked that out over the years. And it got to the point where the decisions that we were making and that I was making with my agent um, and my family as to jobs that I was doing and how I was being seen was a little bit scattergun initially. Um, and if we wanted to be, sort of, we wanted to work out where I want to be, if we wanted to create, and I think you mentioned this, if you want to create a vision as to where you want to end up, that will help you guide your path to get there. I, I did some interesting uh, brand planning with with my sister and her husband they have a company that did a, a similar thing to what you're doing here Chester and it was it was fascinating because one of the great uh, ideas that they had that they presented me with was my niece who was a little baby at the time sitting on a bench and there was a plaque at the top of the bench I mean how many people sit on the bench overlooking a beautiful view and there's a little plaque saying this bench is in memory of Chester Robinson uh, he was a passionate excitable uh, charismatic person and he will be sorely missed or something like that and the idea was what do I want that plaque to say when eventually I have finished my career, when I've retired? What do I want people to remember me as? And if you can work out what you want that plaque to say, then you can start plotting a course to get there. Um, and through sort of exploration with them and um, going out to consumers and sort of doing lots of focus groups about me and what I do, I was able to work out all these things you've talked about. What are my values? What do I stand for? What is my strategic difference between other competitors? Who are my competitors? Now, of course, the competitors for me change because uh, I can move into a different environment. At 2010, I went from doing the breakfast to going into Sky Sports. And so that environment changed dramatically for me. Understanding I could make that move was really important though, and that viewers would, would accept me in that environment. Because often you will see someone 
getting a job doing something on television and the viewers instinctively don't like it. They don't feel comfortable with that person. They don't feel like they fit. But when you know that there is already a reception to that, and I knew that actually people perceived me as somebody who loved their sport, was knowledgeable about sport, I could make that transition uh, comfortably and then enjoyed sort of nine years working for Sky Sports before I then came back to breakfast TV as well. So I think it's been understanding that my, I am a brand in my own right. Obviously, I'm, I'm still me, but understanding that there is a, a brand that I have to be true to and authentic with as well, I think is absolutely key. Because if I, st much as I would love to do Love Island, Chester, as you and I have discussed at length uh, for probably far too long, um, I don't think that would necessarily sit particularly well with my brand. I wouldn't necessarily work for my consumers and that would jar and that could end up doing some damage and protecting the brand and protecting sort of what it is that I do professionally is, is something that I take very seriously and we plan very carefully. So I'm going to stop the video there because I'm just conscious of time. Uh, Chris will share in due course the longer recording of that session just so you can have a bit, bit more. I'm just going to come to a couple of people uh, just in terms of some thoughts and reflections. I'm going to come to Sue and I'm going to come to uh, Perju if you can take yourself off now. And uh, Karen, you're also in my line of sight. So I might just, what did you connect with? Let's, talk, let's start with Sue and then let's uh, give Perju a chance to come off mute. And then if not, Karen, I'll come to you. Yeah, I think there were a couple of things that Ben said. Just for the record, Lucy has no clue who Ben Shepherd is, by the way. I had to explain to her that she's never seen Tipping Point or Good Morning Britain. I just could not believe that. Anyway, that beside that point. Um, <laughs> Thanks. That's okay. um, there's something about um, obviously having the vision of how you want to, want to be remembered. So, you know, write your, as it sounds awful to say it, but can you write your own epitaph and what you want on your epitaph? Um, to be remembered by um, there's something around authenticity so how true are you to yourself all the time and then that sort of links with your audience and your target audience how do you want your audience to perceive you and that's got to be authentic to yourself because ultimately you know you're in this for the long term aren't you and to keep up a personal branding that is not authentically you I think would be quite difficult to do. Um, so there's definitely something for me um, in authenticity and that connection to your target audience. Lovely, great reflections. And yes, I think she may have seen him on say Ninja Warrior, or maybe she's more of a, a football fan and maybe she would have picked him up there, but that's, that's because he's a flexible kind of TV personality. But it's fascinating to hear what you say around authenticity. I think the line is, I think, therefore I am. And potentially you can start to move yourself towards that sense of change, but still remaining authentic to yourselves. Perju, if you can come off mute, that would be great. Otherwise, let's pivot to Karen. I can't see her coming off mute. So Karen, I'm going to look at you because we've got, we've got verbal uh, visuals as well as verbal. Great. Um, I really enjoyed listening to that. There was so much um, that stood out for me. I mean, firstly, um, the fact that Ben um, shared that initially he had this scattergun approach and I think that was very refreshing to hear someone who we see in the public eye um, being vulnerable and sharing that they don't always get it right it's a journey we're all a work in progress so that that was really refreshing to hear um, I picked up again as Lucy did on the vision and um, I work as a coach, an executive coach, so a lot of my work is about creating that vision and then identifying the path that we're going to take to get there. So um, I always use the analogy of um, if you're going to jump in the car and set out somewhere, you need to know where you're going. If you're going to plug something into the sat nav, where are you going? Um, so that, that that really stood out for me. Um, the the lovely story of the bench with his niece and the plaque that he read um, that speaks volumes of you know what is our legacy? What do we want people to remember us for um, down the line? So um, ties very much into that vision. Um, the, the next thing that came up for me was around. Um, 
giving himself permission to make transitions because um, these days um, people have many different careers, whether it be over a period of time or a portfolio of different things they're working on at the same time. So it's um, just knowing that you're not, things are not set in stone. You may have been that, but you can remodel yourself. Um, but also that that final point that again Lucy picked up on of authenticity, um, I thought that that was interesting. Um, it made me smile when he talked about Love Island, that um, you know he recognised that wouldn't necessarily be the place for him, um, and it, the protection of the brand. Um, I, I'd love to think more on that. What do we do to protect our brand once we've um, built something up online? How do we make sure that we um, we um, maintain it. Absolutely. And, and the word I picked up from what you were feeling, that was the idea of transitioning. And many of us will go through different careers over, over our lives, uh, gone other jobs, jobs for life. And therefore, how do you manage and lead for that? The idea that it is planned and planned full and that he's seeking to create that change is, is I think, really valuable. So, Lucy, I'm just kind of reading your 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 comments as you've gone in there as well. Yeah, social media. I, I'm not a big social media fan, hence the reason I've started with social, but I kind of put a big caveat in there. It's more of an output of the way you want to transmit what it is that you're seeking to influence people on. And therefore, uh, LinkedIn and your social media profile, if it's important to you, form part and parcel of who you are. Uh, for me, I don't find it particularly important, but that's because I'm being authentic to myself. What I'm going to share with you is something that Ben was therefore then lifting, and he talked about planful. And in the chat, I'm just going to uh, share an, a PowerPoint slide. Now, on that, um, you can you can click on it. I think if you click on the comments, there's three little dots next to it. You can then open the file, or you can. Uh, open it in a location. I think it saves it to your desktop, to your computer desktop, if you want to. And it's the idea of a brand key. Now, if you've come from a fast moving consumer goods, you may well be aware of a brand key. And the idea is it's broken into three parts. There's a foundation, which is about you. There's your offer that sits above it. I, why do you differentiate yourself versus other? What's your competitive advantage? And then what value do you offer people? And the whole element above the second line, your offer and your value is what's your brand essence? And your brand essence sits right in the middle of the brand key. Now, if you're not able to open that up, what I'm gonna do is very quickly share a screen. I don't do too much PowerPoint as many of you will be aware of, but you just like a brand. That's why I started with the idea of a car or something innate. You just like a product, a goods or a service can brand yourself. And here's a structured way for you to do that. If you want to have a go at this offline, please come back to me on a one to one basis. I'm more than happy to go through this with you. But what are you really good at? What are your strengths? What are your attributes? And who are you seeking to take on in terms of your leadership? So is it I'm leading myself? I'm leading change. I'm leading a project. Am I leading a team? Am I leading a leadership team? Am I leading the entire business or am I maybe just leading my part of the puzzle? So within that, you can start to define what and who you're seeking to influence and inspire. Now, if you are going for a job, for example, you may be competing against somebody for interview. Equally, if you are career minded and you want to go up in your in in your kind of uh, professional ambitions, then you may be seeking to compete against it, people. I took the Aspire team through this, and we looked at our competitive set because we could then work out how we could differentiate our offer by knowing where our competitors were strong and where we were strong. And therefore, you start to create this really strong foundation about really understanding you. And you might choose some 360 degree feedback. You might choose to do some online research. You might choose to do some soul searching and go climbing and walking through the great outdoors. But what is your offer? What are the benefits you bring? What are the main points that you help people solve? I.e., What's your role in leadership? 
it comes back to the different kinds of cars. You know, your leadership style will help solve different problems for different people. And therefore, the style of leadership is as important as the way that you choose to lead. Values, beliefs, personality are all around what you create in terms of your value proposition, the things you stand for, and therefore the proof. You know, people buy into proof uh, proof points. So what's your essence? And therefore, within it, I've shared this kind of template for you. And I'll give you this example. So, and again, from the world of soap, a globally and internationally recognized brand in terms of Dove, what you can start to see is how a brand is built from the roots up in terms of its heritage, very clear in terms of who it's targeting, where the competitive set so it knows where the marketplace is, it defines the landscape, and then some key insight about itself that gives it that piece of competitive advantage. You've then got uh, differentiators and benefits with the kind of then the, the value piece around the top. So I share this as a way of just reflecting on the world around you, the goods and services that you buy into. Having a look at how they might describe themselves is a great way of giving yourself a language and a world, set of words that you could choose to use as well. What I will therefore then do now is just in the final few minutes, I'm going to share a video from a sales director at Nomad Foods, Sean Smith was bought uh, as uh, into the business through the acquisition of Aunt Bessie's. So Nomad Foods is a frozen food business. And the reason I'm sharing you this is, this is somebody that's walked ahead of you and has actually used the brand key and is leading a business and leading growth. So I'm just gonna let Sean share his thoughts and reflections on that. And again, listen and steal with pride some of the words you hear Sean use, because for me, this is about giving you a proof point that it's worth investing your time to do this properly because you haven't got time in 50 minutes online. So you're going to have to do the brand key work offline. Let's just listen to Sean as he then shares some of his thoughts. Branding exercise, having used the brand key probably about uh, a year ago now, I think it was that we were together. What kind of impact has it had on you? It's uh, genuinely Chester. It's been, it's been immense and, I think from my initial scepticism about the idea of, of branding myself, you know, I remember sort of being invited to, uh, to the session and, you know, I probably didn't articulate this, but I was a bit skeptical about the idea of a of, of Sean, if you like. Uh, but it, it's been hugely helpful. Uh, it's been hugely helpful, uh, in just helping me better understand myself, getting comfortable with who I am. Uh, and it was interesting to certainly listen to the three speakers before. Uh, talk, um, particularly Ivan, um, because, you know, it was, it was this exercise that really made me think about my style and my values and, and how I showed up. So I, I initially obviously completed the exercise a few months after the integration, uh, my transition from a small business, as I, as I alluded to at the outset into this much larger, this much larger business. And, um, I. I probably, I probably had a period of time where, um, I was, I was very anxious about who I needed to be in this sort of new, in, in this new world and huge amount of anxiety about, you know, would I, would I need to change? And I, was, I, I guess I was, I was consciously, consciously always wondering, but that, those first sort of few months of the transition about, you know, would I need to, would I need to become more corporate? Um, would I need to become a bit of a robot who's obsessed by process and would I need to hold my personality back or would I need to shoe shuffle a little bit under the boardroom table um, rather than be my usual straightforward talking self. But ultimately, I guess, um, you know, would I, would I need to be somebody that I wasn't to fit in in this, in this, in this much bigger business? You know, I'd gone from working in a business where, where uh, it was entrepreneurial. We turned over around 80 million to a business that was turning over, over 2 billion. And, um, it was, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a concern for me. I think if I'm, uh, I'm brutally open and when I, when I did the fit with the work on my brand key, it genuinely was, it was one of the most seminal moments in my professional career because it allowed me to, to really take control and, and embrace who I am and think about, you know, what, what do I bring to the party? And, you know, what makes me different? And you know, my wife tells me I'm different all of the time. Um, but more importantly, 
um, you know, how could I bring my, my values and my beliefs and my personality into sort of how I lead in this much bigger organization? So without doubt, Chester, it, it had, a, it did really have a, a big impact on sort of how I, how I turn up. So again, I'm going to stop the video there because uh, of time. I'm conscious that we promised you just a 50 minute session. Sure, uh, Chris, I'm sure we'll be sharing onwardly the whole of that interview because it talks about the impact on his business and on his team as well. And he's had some 360 feedback in terms of how he's then shared his brand key with his team. And they he's then asked them to do their brand key as part and parcel of everybody getting a much closer, genuine understanding of what makes each other tick. So it's a super simple tool, but it actually requires quite a lot of deep soul searching to do well. But it can be foundational, it can be seminal, as you heard him say. So I share it as a gift to you. Um, we as a business went through it ourselves and it has helped underpin our three to five year plan around where it is that we wanted to take you spire and we're well on that journey now so i'm conscious of your time i'm conscious it's lunchtime um i'm going to ask you just to do one final thing which is in the chat just write down a few words that you have connected with or taken out of today's session and whether or not you would like any further follow-up in terms of the brand key just let me know on a one-to-one -one basis so just drop in some of the words that are resonating with you on a personal perspective. Ben, I can see you've gone very reflective now. I see the session has kind of got your mental neurons firing. Look, so hopefully you've enjoyed the session. After you've fired in a couple of words in terms of your personal reflections, are there any questions? Are there any questions from the group? I'll take myself off, off uh, spotlighted view so I can just see everybody. Are there any questions, any thoughts on any reflections? Just wave a hand if you've got any reflections you feel like you're happy to share with the wider group. Kate, are you talking to people or uh, just Wait. take yourself off mute there, Kate, if you can. And then I think I might go to Lucy. Uh, yes, Lucy. We were okay. just saying how... Oh, you come on. <laughs> Go for it, Lucy. Sorry. We were just saying, actually, you know, when you're employed you you know you might spend a lot of time doing this sort of work on on actual brands however you don't necessarily do it for yourself and actually when you come out of that employment how important doing this is um it's re really resonating for, for Sue and I lovely stuff and what I would say is if you're still in your same role the same tool isn't all about helping new transition is about giving you a language you can share Kate back to you um yeah one of the things is from what Ben said was um the career change from kind of morning kind of social to to the sports side of things actually was didn't seem clear cut but actually it was it was the passion he put behind it that made it work and I think you know it, you, you do kind of look at could I go into that industry or that industry and you, you kind of go oh well I don't I don't really know it to an extent but actually if you've got the passion then it can obviously open doors and i think showing people that passion is really important it's going to show you the gap the gaps that you might need to transition across in order to be authentically credible so maybe you've got the seniority or the experience of industry maybe you've got the skill set or maybe you've got something that's complementary that you can identify is a gap in terms of where you're moving to You've then got to be able to sell that to those that you're seeking to influence. And that's why we've got this bit in the brand key down the bottom. Who am I seeking to inspire and to influence? Because that then starts to talk about how you ladder up your messaging to the people that you need to create some form of change within. So that's why we put that piece in there. Lovely stuff. Any other thoughts or builds or shall I let you get on the rest of your day? Phil, far as away as the final build. Yeah, I think a quick thing for me is the subtlety of you really you just 
highlighted who is it you're trying to speak to and influence because the situation i am in at the moment is one of the sets of people that i need to speak to receive the message of what i'm doing extremely well they then pass it to the gatekeeper who has to sign up for that in the organization and they they need a completely different message they have very different concerns so it's is that challenge of keeping the same brand which excites one group of people and the next group of people you need to you need to show them that you're going to meet their needs as well so it's you don't you don't want to compromise your brand but you've got to be able to speak slightly differently to two people brilliant and i think that that, that ties back very much into some of the purpose of these sessions which is around customer success decision making uh, how you seek to take those people forward so that's absolutely within the sweet spot of where the brand key gives you that. So stakeholder management, stakeholders mapping, all of that fits in as a part of the output. But it's your brand key that tells you whether or not there's a gap or not. So thanks for those builds. Great, great, great builds. Lovely stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I'll relate online. Your time is your own. Thank you for joining us on this Discover Your Spa session. I look forward to maybe seeing some more of you October 12th, should you choose to join us. We have a leadership session uh, in London. So if you would like to join us, uh, please feel free. I think that there is a code, is there not, Chris, uh, which is inclusive-vip, inclusive.vip. If you could just drop that into the chat, Chris, we've got inclusive leadership. I, how do we take this and demystify the ideas of DE&I in a leadership space? So if you can join us in London, please feel free to just register, sign up at our events page. Until then, I look forward to seeing you all in due course. Cheers now. Bye-bye.